conferences, piles of flyers, getting stuck on endless email lists, never-ending calls. There's an easier way to sort through and find the best school fundraisers. School Zone Podcast proudly presents the 10 Top School Fundraising Ideas for 2017, a guide of top fundraising companies hand-picked from the best podcasts. As an added bonus, it lists five awesome resource companies that would add tremendous value to your school and students. A guide to 10 top fundraising companies and five resource companies. And we're giving the guide away for free. That's right, for free. Ready to simplify the search? Download the free guide at schoolzonepodcast.com. Welcome to School Zone School Fundraising Ideas Podcast. We interview top fundraising and resource companies to help you find a solution to your next school fundraising or school resource need. Are you ready to simplify the search? Now, here's your host, Matt Miller. Hey, hey, School Zone podcast listeners, Matt coming at you from EIEIO here in Stephenville, Texas. I have Becky Butler on the line this afternoon from Lion's Heart. Um, we ran into each other at the California PTA conference here about a month ago and didn't get a chance to talk there. So due to the amazing technology available to us today using Skype, um, she's in California. I'm here in Texas, and here we are getting a chance to share with you all. Becky, why don't you introduce yourself and, and uh, share a little bit about you? Well, thank you, Matt. I'm so happy to be here with you and talking to your followers. My name again is Becky Butler, and I'm with Lion's Heart. Lion's Heart is an organization that works to make teen volunteering easy. My background is I'm the program director for Lion's Heart, and um, Lion's Heart has been around since 2004. We started as just a group of kids in a mom's living room, and we've now grown to be in 22 states across the country. And we have 137 chapters of teens serving in their community across the country. So how long have you been with the organization, Becky? I'm a relative I'm relatively new here. I started in November of last year. Awesome. And we're growing like crazy, getting bigger all the time. We've added three new states just this year. So what's the story behind the beginnings of Lion's Heart? you know, that, uh, that living room, et cetera. It's actually, it's kind of a fun story. Our founder, Terry Corwin, um, had been in National Charity League when she was younger and really enjoyed serving in her community and volunteering. And when she was married and had two boys, she wanted an organization for her boys that where they could serve in their community and leadership skills with a group of peers. But at the time, there was nothing like um, National Charity League for boys. So she got her son and 19 of his friends together in her living room, and they created Lion's Heart. And as the years went on, we got girls groups. They expanded to different ages and different cities and now different states across the country. And now what it's become is a real technological platform to make volunteering easy. A lot of times what people find is they want their kids to serve and they want them to learn and have empathy and all those sorts of things. But it can be very difficult to find volunteering opportunities for kids under 18. So what Lion's Heart does is we are a web platform where once you become a member, volunteer pro opportunities are sent directly to you. It's completely flexible. Um, that was the other thing that, that Terry, our founder, wanted for our kid, that they're all so incredibly ske overscheduled and busy and all kinds of commitments. So she wanted it to be very flexible and very easy for the kids. So what we do is we send them just a whole bunch of opportunities they can pick and choose what they want to do. They can do it with their group or they can do it independently. We give them a way to log all their volunteer opportunities so that when it comes time to apply for college or apply for a job or a scholarship, they have a record of everything they've ever done. 
And um, we also work to build um, leadership skills with the kids because each of their groups, they elect their own officers, they hold their own meetings. So it's really a great way to develop those skills for the kids. And it came from very simple beginnings. I guess that's, that's awesome. So the different chapters or the different groups that you guys have in those 22 states how do they get started? Do, are, do, are you guys looking to find people to build chapters from to begin with? Or do people find you guys and reach out and say, hey, we want to bring this to our area? Yeah, How does that work? It actually, a lot of our people join because of word of mouth. But what we've done is <clears throat> we've done a lot on the internet to spread the word about Lion's Heart. So we have found cities around the country, people will say, hey, we'd love to start this group in our town. We make it so easy for them. All they have to do is the first person enrolls as soon as two more join after them. And we we group our groups by gender and grade level. So say, for instance, a girl in the ninth grade joins in, you know, any town USA as soon as two more girls for same grade join in that town, a group and a chapter are formed. They Once that happens, they start having meetings, they elect officers, they start receiving volunteer opportunities, and it's a go. So it's super easy. As long as there's three, we have a group. So... Are they normally three that know each other, or in many cases, are they just three random people in that area that have heard about you guys and decide to you know, raise their hand, essentially? And it absolutely can be both. We have had chapters that start, just three random people come and sign up. Most times, however, it is one person comes and signs up, and then we help them out. We give them like sample emails that they can send to the parents and pass the words to friends. Or a lot of times what will happen is once our groups are anywhere from three kids to 20 kids, so as the group grows and they start serving in their community, we they all wear their Lion's Heart shirts when they go out to serve, and people will start seeing them serving in the community and We get great reviews on our volunteers, like people will come and ask for volunteers from us, and we mobilize our kids to send them out, so people will start seeing them volunteering in the community and inquire, and hey, how do I join? And it is very much of a word of mouth, kind of, it spreads, but one of the great things is a lot of organizations require you, you have to apply and be accepted and things like that. For our group, it's we're inclusive of everyone. If you want to join, there's a spot for you, and we'll make a spot for you. So let's say three kids get together or a group of them and say they want to start a club in their area. Are they then going out and finding volunteer opportunities? or Because you said that you're ex- regularly exposing them to opportunities in their area that they can pick and choose mm-hmm. from. Or is that something that you guys are handling at, at an organi- at the organizational level? How, do, how does all that come together? That's a great question, Matt. We get asked that a lot. The thing I love about Lion's Heart is it's so simple because once that group is formed and that chapter is formed, we have a, a volunteer outreach coordinator who actually goes out in the community in that area and seeks out volunteer opportunities for the kids. And she turns around and emails them at least once a month. They get an email that says, hey, there's these three opportunities available in your area or you know, however many it happens to be. Um, the other thing that we do, um, the kids meet about eight times a year. Once a month, we send them at least three ideas of things that they can do because we like them not only to do the things that they're emailed and land in their inbox, but also to take the initiative to plan their own things. So we'll send them at least three ideas. If it's Read Across America Week, we send, you know, we might send an idea that, hey, go out in your neighborhood, make some flyers, collect books, donate them to the library. 
go down to the library, read to kids. Like we send them ideas as well so they can take their own initiative. And also once they're in a group, what we've found is one is a scout and they're doing a project that they need help on. They can, they get the rest of the group to come and help them with, you know, maybe they're doing an Eagle Scout project where they're building a trail in a park or something. They get the group involved to help them with that project. So it's, it's nice because it's something that just kind of grows from all different, all different directions where they get the opportunities. So then are you guys supported? How how does it by donations or how do you guys, how are you guys able to do what you do in support of these different groups that are popping up all over the place? We are completely supported by membership fees. Do require a membership dues. It's a yearly dues of $75 per member, but in return, we do not require them to fundraise at all. Um, We do have a lot of, because we are a technology platform, Mm -hmm. a lot of our technology is donated to us by partners that work with us. We get a ton of money from Google and uh, various different software companies. So that helps support us. But the rest of our expenses are paid by member dues. And then that way, the kids don't have to sell anything or do anything like that. We are very much supporters of no fundraising because we know that the kids get asked that a lot for schools and scouts and everything else. Do you have any criteria as far as the types of volunteer opportunities that are out there? Any kind of framework that, that an opportunity has to fall within in order for them to be a fit for, for what you guys are doing? Yeah, we absolutely do. Our criteria is that the kids have to be volunteering for the most part for a nonprofit and it can't be, you know, volunteering for your grandma. Um, It has to be for someone in need. So we, we do say often, you know, it has to be for a nonprofit, but the volunteering can be anything from, we get a lot of nonprofits in areas that come to our website and they'll come in and say, hey, we're, we're sponsoring a gala this weekend for a women's shelter. And we could use some kids to help us. We're having a, you know, a silent auction and the ki- we would love the kids to come help set up tables and carry gifts for the, for the attendees and that sort of thing. So we, we get requests like that. But then we do require that it be for a nonprofit and that it's some of our kids go and help at senior citizens events. We have one here in Laguna Hills where we're located at, where they have a senior center and they have seniors come in to learn how to use technology, iPads, iPhones, and the kids come in and teach all the seniors how to use their iPads you know, their computers, their iPads, their iPhones, and the kids have a blast and the seniors have a blast and it, it's a wonderful thing. So do you guys work with or support faith-based organizations at all or how does all that tie in? We are not, we ourselves are not faith-based. We are, um, you had mentioned like how do we support, you know, money-wise. We are a completely volunteer organization. We are not faith-based. But we also don't restrict the kids from serving if they serve at vacation Bible school, something like that. Um, the Our only restriction is they are not allowed to like teach a Bible class, like that sort of thing. But if they want to help out with the vacation Bible school or if a church is doing um, a food drive, that sort of thing, we don't restrict them from doing that. But we ourselves are not faith-based. How do you guys typically uh, work with the schools in this regard? Do you, you know, encourage the schools to maybe get some teens together to to begin a chapter? Or do you do anything that's more directed through the educational system at all? Or is it all kind of outside of all of that? Well, 
Because we want to be inclusive and we want the kids to be able to, like if, if three kids in an area that go to three different schools want to join the same group, many of our chapters have kids from all different schools. But what we do is we serve the schools in, say for instance, the PTA has a big event. They will come to us and request volunteers. And we mobilize all of our members in the area to go serve at an event that either a school or a PTA might be sponsoring. The other thing that we do is we reach out to the guidance counselors and the educators at the school, because in today's world, if you want to apply for college, you have to have something besides fabulous grades. Um, you have to show community involvement. And one of the things that um, our system allows the kids to do is have what we like to call a volunteer transcript of everything they've ever done. So we like to work with the counselors to let them know about what is involved with Lion's Heart because then they will recommend to their kids that come in for counseling, you know, hey, you need volunteer hours. Here's an easy, fun way to go serve in your community kind of thing. Very, very cool. So what are some of the areas on your radar, Becky? First off, aside from California, where you guys are located, but then what are some others that are kind of on the radar right now? Um, and even for those that are not in any of those areas, if they wanted to find out more about your program and how to potentially get a chapter started in their area, what's the best way to do that? It's super easy. We are open to any place in the country. We have certain areas where we're especially strong, but if somebody <clears> wants <throat> to start a new chapter anywhere they're located, all they need to do is visit our website, which is lionsheartservice.org. There's a little button at the top that says sign up. You go through the sign up process, and as soon as you do, a chapter or a group is started. As soon as two more, same gender, same grad year, join, there we have each group has a class coordinator, which is an adult who kind of oversees things. Once we have three kids and an adult, you're good to go, and they start doing all the wonderful stuff that Lions Heart kids do. That's awesome, Becky. I I was not familiar with the organization at all, and uh, it's been really neat to get a chance to talk. Um, I learn something new every time I have one of these conversations, So, and I trust the audience will as well. Is there anything else that you'd like to leave with the School Zone audience before uh, before we close things out? Yeah, first of all, I want to say thank you, Matt, for inviting me to be on your show. It's been a, a fun time. And just if anyone is interested in teen volunteering, we are always available um, on our website. We have a ton of great information, lionsheartservice.org. Or if anybody has any other questions, they can give us a call at 800-894-8877, and we're happy to chat with you. Becky Butler, thanks for volunteering your time to talk about Lion's Heart here on The School Zone. Um, hope you have a great rest of the week, and uh, we'll hope to talk again soon. All right. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Thanks for listening to The School Zone's School Fundraising Ideas Podcast and for simplifying the search. Be sure to subscribe to the show so you don't miss an episode. When you do, please leave us a five-star review in iTunes or your podcast player of choice. Most teachers and administrators not only want their kids to have developed minds, but opportunities to develop creativity, positive human values, and a sense of personal excellence. But your budget doesn't allow for all of it. You need fundraising. At School Spirit Vending, we are helping a growing number of elementary schools fundraise the easy way, and we do all the work. We provide the sticker vending machine, free customized school logo stickers, licensed and non-licensed stickers like NFL and Disney, as well as tons of other fun stickers that are relevant to kids. The best part? School Spirit Vending is free. No upfront expenses for schools at all. A percentage of machine revenue goes directly to the school, PTA, or PTO each month. And did I say customized stickers? Our skilled graphics team can help custom design your school spirit stickers. You just tell us what you want. The only thing you do is provide us a busy hallway or commons area. Oh, 
and you'll have to find the time to cash a monthly check. It doesn't get any easier than that. 2000 Elementary Schools can't be wrong. To see for yourself how easy year-round hassle-free fundraising can be, go to schoolspiritvending.com forward slash school zone. 